Hi, second video in the series dedicated to the iOS XR 731 innovations. Today we will talk about eVPN and also multicast over eVPN. And we will have two presenters, Yiri and Lampros. You can use the shortcuts in the description below to jump directly to the different features. Also, we link the other videos relative to iOS XR 731 in the companion article we published on xrdocs.io. And now, Irka. Hello everyone, my name is Yuri Kaloka, I'm Technical Marketing Engineer, and today I will talk about latest eVPN features in Cisco EOS XR 731. Let's go directly to the first feature, which is eVPN head-end. eVPN head-end is a very important enhancement for the existing pseudo-wire head-end solution. We are bringing redundancy into the access with the eVPN VPWS and all the redundancy modes, and we are also bringing uh, the head-end redundancy, where basically we are using the eVPN control plane on the top of the head-end to decide which interface will be uh, will be active and which one will be will be standby. You can see very basic configuration for uh, for a head end. You can see that it's uh, pretty much same except we are replacing the pseudo wire by eVPN VPWS and we are also configuring the Ethernet segment, which is uh, there to basically bring this eVPN control plane on the top of the head end. So this one is bringing another mode for the for the redundancy. Let's right now go uh, directly to the next topic, which is uh, convergence. Convergence is a very important part of the 731, and we will basically spend the uh, rest of the time on this topic. So uh, first one, let's do a very quick recap what uh, we are doing today and how we are solving the convergence today in the network. So first one which exists is the, is the failure in the, in the core, like when the node uh, goes down or a link goes down in the, in the core. When we are talking about the MPLS data plane, we are talking about typically P-router or spine, and this is completely service agnostic. So when this uh, failure happens, uh, transport will take care of this. Typically, when you are using, the, for example, MPLS with the segment routing, TI-LFA will basically provide uh, fast convergence. The another one is very eVPN specific, and it's uh, about the Mac mobility. This is something also which we introduced at the beginning of the eVPN, and it's basically bringing the sequence number when we are when I'm advertising the Mac addresses. So in this case, initially I have a VM connected to the leaf one, leaf two. Leaf one, leaf two will advertise this Mac address of the of the VM, but at the same time when I will move the VM behind the L3 or L4. I, once the L3, L4 will learn this MAC address, they will increase the sequence number when they are advertising the new route type 2, basically when they are advertising uh, the MAC address again. So everyone will immediately overwrite this information in the, in the forwarding chain because they will see the higher sequence number. It's very eVPN specific and we have this feature from the, from the beginning. Another very important uh, feature for, from the eVPN, which is also there from the beginning, but it's uh, speeding up the convergence time rapidly, is mass withdrawal. This one, when we will take the example, when the, here the remote node PE3 is forwarding towards, the, towards C1, which is multi-home, to P1, PE2. You can see that uh, it's, uh, C1 is multi-home over, over two links. Both of the links here, I configure the Ethernet segment 1. So when I will look at the forwarding chain on the PE3, I have a MAC address of the C1, which is pointing to this Ethernet segment, and this Ethernet segment is basically behind P1, PE2. When the failure will happen between C1 and PE1, P1 has to just do the withdrawal of the route type 1 per ESI. So basically tell to remote to know, hey, this ESI is not behind PE1 anymore. Just only when this, uh, with this one update, the PE3 can start to immediately redirect the traffic directly to the, to the PE2. So one update and I'm able to, to forward the traffic only to the, to the PE2 when I have a link failure between C1 and PE1. It's very important because it theoretically doesn't matter how many MAC addresses I have behind the P1, I will always do very quick switchover. At the same time, there is always a delay when the BGP control plane will advertise this information to the remote node. So because of this, we cannot always guarantee subsequent convergence time. We are taking another approach, and this is very, uh, very familiar in the LCVPN world when we, have, when we have the BGP big edge solution. Let me quickly remind how this works. When, basically, when I have a CE connected to PE1 and PE2, let's say in this example, I'm using the eBGP between the CE1 and P1 and PE2 here. So what will happen here is then when I will start to use the big edge, the PE1 will pre-program 
the backup part over the PE2. So when the failure between C1 and P1 will happen, before the remote end will realize that this failure is there in the network, will still forward to PE1. But PE1 will basically use this backup part, which is pre-programmed in the hardware, and will forward over PE2 to the, to the CE1. This will give you, for a certain amount of the time, will give you suboptimal forwarding, but you are not like holding the traffic. Very similar way is uh, the something what we are introducing in 731. So basically convergence in a 731 for EVPN, multipoint for all active as well as for single active, which is very important there, is doing very, very similar thing. So basically I will take uh, the path towards the C1 here, for example, on the P1, and I will pre-program the backup path over, over, the, over the P2. So which means that in this example, as you said, see also on the slide, when I have again the link failure between C1 and P1, once the traffic is coming from the remote end towards the PE1, PE1 will basically forward or redirect the traffic over the, over the PE2 and then to the access. Uh, this is also, with, with this one, we are rapidly speeding up the, uh, the, the convergence for all the, all the EVPN, and it works for all active and the single active. So most important uh, enhancement in 731. Here you can see the configuration, which is uh, very basic. Under the Ethernet segment configuration, you will just configure the convergence and the reroute. Again, uh, you can see all active as well as single active configuration. Let me uh, right now do a very quick recap on the, on the load balancing mode, because we are introducing also one more load balancing mode in the 731. So from the beginning of the EVPN, we have an all active uh, load balancing mode. This mode is basically that P1, PE2 here are cheating the CE. C is uh, thinking that it's connected to the one device. So C has a one transparent bundle. Later on, we introduce the single active mode. And also, uh, you can see that we also later on introduced the port active mode. I talk about it during, uh, uh, during the last update. Uh, in the 731, we are uh, trying to improve the convergence for the, for the L2 legacy protocols, which are connected to the EVPN. So basically, when you will take L2 legacy, like spanning tree, G8032, RAP, you can, you can connect them to the, to the EVPN. And from the EVPN point of view, you can take it as a single home. Why? Because you have all the time this L2 legacy taking care of the loop in the access. So basically, L2 legacy protocol will break the loop in the, in the access. So when we will look at on the left side, uh, from the logical point of view, A3 is connected to PE1 and A1, A2 are connected to the PE2. Uh, we want to really improve the convergence time because uh, this uh, was definitely not perfect from the convergence point of view. So we are introducing the single flow active. Single flow active is also leveraging a lot of pre-programmed information on the PE1, PE2, and basically is helping to speeding up the whole the convergence uh, process when you are con uh, connecting your L2 legacy protocol to the, to the EVPN. Here is again uh, like a very simple configuration, uh, very similar to what we had for the, for the fast reroute for the all active and single active. You can see the new load balancing mode, single flow active convergence and make mobility. And basically you are enabling this for the, for the gateway towards the, towards the L2 legacy. Here is uh, just an example of the, of the route type 1 per ESI. You can see on the bottom of the, of the slide that uh, we have a new uh, load balancing mode, which is a uh, single flow active. If you want to know more about it, you can look at the, the draft, which is also there on the bottom of the slide. I said that uh, we are really focusing on the, on the convergence in 731. Uh, we have another two enhancements, which are there also very important. One of them is a next hop tracking for the DF election. So imagine that you have an example where one node goes down. You need to kick off the DF election on the second node as fast as possible to basically bring really fast convergence. What we are doing here is that we are enabling the next hop tracking for the route type 4. So basically, when uh, my next hop will disappear from, uh, from my routing table, from my, from my FIP, I will immediately kick off the, the new DF election. Another very important for the speeding up the DF election is uh, the NTP sync. This is a very nice feature when you have the two nodes which are multi-homing same segment and these nodes are basically NTP synchronized. They will start to advertise the route type 4 with the timestamp. You don't have to do any additional configuration. Basically, you just need to do NTP synchronization. Once NTP synchronization is there, you will start to introduce the, the timestamp into the route type 4 and hold the process can be speed up. That's all from my side for 731 for the EVPN. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lavros Gavoyanis. I'm a technical marketing engineer for the mass infrastructure group at Cisco Systems. And I'm going to present to you a new feature for NCS devices, which is called Multicast over EVPN multi-homing infrastructure. And it is supported on all line cards of NCS 5500, NCS 5700, 
including 400 gig and 100 gig cards. Multi-homing is in high demand on provider edge networks because it offers a plethora of services. It enables load balancing by dividing data across multiple interfaces, provides better redundancy and supports disaster recovery. Now, let's consider the following example. We have the IP core network running PIM on the provider with a couple of devices in it, the L2 access network and the receivers on the customer side. To successfully forward the multicast traffic, such as an IP TV service over a resilient infrastructure with eVPN multi-homing, we need two components. One, IGMP sync between the PE routers, route type 7 and 8, and two, BF election between the PE peers. Let's talk about the IGMP sync. There is a PIM core tree with two PE routers. On one side of the tree, there is a multicast sender close to the RP, while on the other side, there is a receiver attached to the PEs. The same receiver is linked to two PEs, both sending IGMP syncs. Both PEs serve the same client and are in sync between each other thanks to route type 7 and 8. There is a need for IGMP synchronization mechanism that would allow all PE routers that serve the same access or ether segment to share their state. This is done by leveraging EVPN type 7, which is IGMP joint sync route, and EVPN type 8, which is IGMP live sync route between the PE routers. The type 7 and type 8 messages look like this. These two messages combined can take care of the IGMP join and leave messages that are coming from the access site. By leveraging these routes, we can start the IGMP syncing between the PE peers that are saving the same multicast receivers or same Ethernet segment. Now, let's change gears and talk about the election. The designated forwarder in EVPN networks is a provider edge router responsible for sending broadcast, unknown unicast, and multicast traffic to a multi-home customer equipment device on a given VLAN on a particular Ethernet segment. After IGMP snooping has been enabled and this information has been synced to the peer, both the peers need to act like a last hope router and send PIM join upstream. Once traffic arrives on both the peers, only one should forward it to the receiver. Designated forwarder election elects one peer to do the forwarding. Between PE1, PE2, and PE3, PE4, there should be always be an agreement who forwards the multicast traffic to the access. In unicast, both of them can forward, but in multicast, that's not the case. And that wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching.